Okay. So first of all, we, um, one of the things you're going to learn when you look at those videos is what is an exponential function. All right. So an exponential function has this form. So it looks like this. So it's, it has this form f of x equal a to the x power. Notice where the variable is located. The variable is located in the exponent. So that's why it's called an exponential function. And the graph looks looks different than some of the other graphs that you've dealt with, and you're going to see what that looks like. But that's what an exponential function looks like. It's um, it, the variable is located in the exponent. All right. So compare that from something you had earlier, like x squared, uh, f x equal x squared. This is not an exponential function because the variable is not located in the exponent. In fact, this is a quadratic function. Okay, this is quadratic. All right. But this is an exponential. Again, what makes an exponential is the, the fact that the um, exponent, um, the variable is located in the exponent. Now, one of the other things you're going to uh, learn is that the base, the base must be greater than zero, must be positive, and it cannot equal one. All right, so one of the things you're going to learn in those lessons is, is that fact the base must be positive and the base cannot equal one. Okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and, and look at this example. So the first example will be this. Let's go ahead and graph number one. And let's suppose we want to graph f of x equals 2 to the x. So that's an exponential function. The base, this is called the base. The base is 2. And notice the base is positive. So 2 is positive and it doesn't equal 1. Okay, now we're going to use a t-table for right now just to kind of show you what it's going to look like. So if I use a t-table and if I let x be 0, when x is 0, I get 2 to the 0. And you all remember from a previous course and even from this course that 2 to the 0 is 1. And if you don't remember that, use your calculator. Watch. If you, if you type in 2 raised to the 0 power and press equal, you get 1. So any number, any number raised to the 0 power is 1. All right, so, that's, so I get the point 0, 1. If I use x uh, to be 1, if I let 1 to be x, I get 2 to the first, which is 2. All right, so I get the point 1, 2, the ordered pair 1, 2. If x is negative 1, now be careful with the negatives, especially with x exponents. Some students have trouble with that. Um, you have 2 to the negative 1. Now be careful, 2 to the negative 1 does not mean negative 2. All right, 2 to the negative 1, remember when the exponent is, is negative, you want to make that exponent positive. So you're going to rewrite, you're going to take the reciprocal of the base. So to make that exponent positive, you take the reciprocal of the base. So that'll be 1 half to the first, which is just 1 half. So 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. And if you have to check yourself on a calculator, look, 2 raised, 2 raised to the, um, and put that in parentheses, negative 1 power, close the parentheses, you should get 0. 0.5, which is 1 half. Okay? So use your calculator to help you with these. If x is 2, if x is 2, I get 2 squared, which is 4. All right? If x is negative 2, so here's another negative. So let's talk about that. 2 to the negative second power. So x is negative. 2 to the negative second. So remember, to make this, to make this positive, to make this exponent positive, I have to take the reciprocal of the base. So the reciprocal of the base is 1 half. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. But I'm squaring it. So instead of negative 2, it's going to be a positive 2 because I took the reciprocal. So to make that exponent positive, you take the reciprocal of the base. And then 1 half raised to the second power is 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. So I get 1 fourth. And let's do a couple more points. So if x is 3, I get 2 to the third, which is 8. And if x is negative 3, so let's talk about the negative again. So if x is negative 3, I get 2 to the negative third. Now remember, this is negative. That does not mean negative 8 or negative 6. It is, first of all, it's not negative because a positive number raised to any power, whether it's positive or negative, is always positive. So this is never going to be negative. So let's talk about this, though. So the, the, the exponent is negative. To make that exponent positive, I need to take the reciprocal of the base. So the reciprocal of 2 
is one half, and they're going to raise this to the positive third. And so one half times one half times one half is one eighth. So you get one eighth. And again, you can check yourself. So watch uh, net two to the negative third, two raised to the negative third equals 0.125, which is one divided by eight. Okay. So what I want to do now, though, is go ahead and plot those points and let's talk about that. So let's see what an exponential function, what the graph of an exponential function looks like. Now remember, this is two to the x. So let's let's graph this. So I'm going to use grid paper. And so I get 0, 1, which is here. Okay, see that? 0, 1. Then remember, we had the point. So remember, the next point was 1, 2, negative 1, 1 half. So 1, 2 is here. Okay. All right. Then negative one half, I'm sorry, negative one one half, which is here. Negative one one half, which is here. All right. And I want to mention this also. Notice all those y values. See all those y values? None of them were uh, well, none of them were negative, right? So no matter what x value I chose, whether it's negative or positive, my y value was always positive and it was never zero. And remember what we talked about, a positive number raised to any power is always positive. So that's why my y values are showing up as positive numbers. So that's gonna be important when we, when we, graph, this, when we graph this and talk about it. So if I look at the next point, two, four, well, two, four is here, okay? Then the next point, negative two, one fourth, is here. See, it's the, the, the points are getting closer and closer and closer to that x-axis. And it's never negative, right? So, so I'm never going to have a point that's below the x-axis because if I had a point below the x-axis, my y value would be negative. And these y values are not negative. So the point's this. If I look at that next one, 3, 8, so 3, 8 is here. My y values, my, my points on this side, my y values are getting closer and closer to the, to the x-axis without touching it. And so it looks like this. So when I connect the dots, it looks like this. So that's what an exponential function looks like. It has that shape. So, so what happens, it, it, it kind of looks like it's getting flat, flatter, and flatter here. Flatter, I'm using the word flatter, F-L-A-T, all right? And it, it's not, in this case, it's not going to cross the x-axis or touch it because if it touches it, that means my y value is zero. And none of these y values were zeros. It's not going to cross it because if it crosses it, that means my y values are negative. And none of these y values are negative. So one of the things you're going to learn when you look at those videos on this topic is that an exponential function, an exponential function has a horizontal asymptote. All exponential functions, all exponential functions have an um, horizontal asymptote. And remember there was a lesson you, you talked about earlier last week maybe that talked about vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Remember when you talked about those rational functions? This is an exponential though. An exponential function has a horizontal asymptote, all of them. And the question is, how do you find it? All right, so so watch. You remember um, an exponential function looks like this, correct? So I'm going to write it like this. So I'm going to write it as, as uh, a to the x plus c. All right, so plus some number. This number right here, that number right here is your horizontal asymptote. That's the horizontal asymptote. So notice when I did this right here, when I graphed this, I could also have written this as two to the x plus zero, right? So this is your horizontal asymptote. And remember how you graphed, how you labeled a horizontal asymptote? You said y equal. So my horizontal asymptote here, my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. And remember y equals zero is also denoted as the x-axis. And what do you notice here? The graph is getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So your horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. Okay? And also notice that, that uh, uh, the graph 
So it gets closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote, and on this side, it rises rapidly. So an exponential function rises rapidly. And so there's the graph of f of x equals 2 of x, and that's all that is. All right, now let's, let's do this one. So, so we, we talked about this function. Now let's do one where, where we have this instead. So this would be number 2. So we have g of x equals 2 to the x minus 3 this time. All right, so remember, this was 2 to the x, right? This is um, 2 to the x minus 3. So remember when you talked about transformations? You remember what that negative 3 does? Remember that negative 3 shifts the, shifts the parent function? So this is called your parent function. And it shifts the parent function down 3. So when we graph this, when we go back and look at this graph, and let me find it, when we go back and look at this graph, this is going to be shifted down 3. Okay, so let's talk about this. So, so the horizontal asymptote, so this right here is the horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is y equal negative 3. Okay, so what you're going to do is, is you're going to draw your dotted line. Remember your, draw, your dotted line for horizontal and vertical asymptotes? So you're going to draw a dotted line just like this at negative 3. Okay, y equals negative 3. So there's my horizontal asymptote. All right. Now, one thing I need to also mention is that we just talked about the fact that all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. There are no vertical asymptotes. There are no vertical asymptotes for an exponential. And the reason is this. You see the, the, uh, the x values I have here? I could use any number for x and plug into here so there were no restrictions. This, this exponential function, all exponential functions have no restrictions for x. I can use any positive number, any negative number, and I could use zero. So, my, so since there are no uh, restrictions, there are no vertical asymptotes. And in fact, the domain, the domain of all exponential functions, the domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers. All real numbers. And remember how that is, how you write that as an interval? So as an interval, you say negative infinity to positive infinity. In set builder notation, you would say the set of x's such that x is an element of all real numbers. Okay? So all, so the domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers. So if you look at this, the one we um, had graphed earlier, and I keep losing that graph. So here it is. So remember, you see the arrows going this way? So when, when you use a ruler or some kind of instrument, you're going from negative infinity, and you see how the arrow is going up like this? So it keeps on going up. So you're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's the domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. And the domain of all exponential functions, no matter what the base is, so if this was a 4, if this was a 1 -third the base, it would still be negative infinity to infinity because there are no restrictions for the variable x for an exponential function. Unlike, remember when you did the um, rational functions, there were some restrictions most of the time, but for an exponential function, there isn't any. All right, so for, for the one we're talking about right now, which is this, oops, sorry, which is this. So I uh, need for you to remember, when you, when you look at the lessons, you're going to learn that this number right here is your horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote, remember to name a horizontal line, horizontal line is always y equals. A vertical line is x equal. A horizontal line is y equal. So there's my horizontal asymptote. So y equals negative 3 is a horizontal asymptote for this problem. Okay? Now, let's use a t-table to help us. And you're just going to need a few points. I'm not going to be very picky about this particular one on the final. But on the final, they're going to ask you to describe in, in terms of transformations how to graph this. So you would say something like this. In terms of transformations, you would say this. You would say, um, take uh, 2 to the x, 2 to the x, and shift it down 3 units. And shift down 3 units. And that's it. That's what you would say for transformations. Okay? But to graph it, let's use a t-table. So I always use zero. 
Okay, always use zero. And the reason for that is because is because when you let x be zero, remember what it is you're finding. When x is zero, you're finding, when x is zero, you're finding the y-intercept. So, so always let x be zero, so that way you know what the y-intercept is. That's the y-intercept when you let when you let x be zero. You're finding the y-intercept. So if x is zero, let's see what we get. We get two to the zero minus three, right? X is zero. Well, remember, what is two to the zero? Well, any number raised to the zero power is one. So this is one minus three, which is a negative two. Negative two. So I get the point zero, negative two. And so notice what this looks like. Zero, negative two is right here. Okay? And let's let x be one. So if x is one, I get two to the first minus three. Well, two to the first is two. Two minus three is a negative one. So I get the point one, negative one, which is here. Okay? And let's pick negative one. X equals negative one. When x is negative one, when x is negative one, I get two to the negative one minus three. Two to the negative one minus three. And two to the negative one, remember, is one half. And one half minus three is a negative two and a half. And so this is negative one, negative two and a half. And so there's that point here. So negative one, negative two and a half is right here. And look, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let x be two. Let x be two. And when x is two, I get two to the second power minus three. Two to the second is four. Four minus three is one. So I get the point two, one, and just draw your graph. Make it look like, like it's, it's um, increasing rapidly. And on this side, it's very important to understand, on this side, the graph gets closer and closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote without touching or crossing. So make sure, make sure when you graph it, you don't, you don't all of a sudden make it look like it's touching it because you're going to be very upset when you don't get all your points. Just do it something like this. Just get closer and closer and that's it. Just draw your arrows and you're done. If you make it cross, that's incorrect. You know it cannot cross a horizontal. And it doesn't touch the horizontal as well. Okay, so just make it get closer and closer and you're done. Don't make it look like it touches. Don't make it look like, like it crosses. On this side, just make it look like it rises rapidly like this. All right. So that's, that's that one. So that is f of x equal 2 to the x minus 3. So notice this number here is your horizontal asymptote. All right, now let's look at this one, though. So let's look at number 3. So number 3, let's suppose we had this. h of x equals negative 2 to the x. So remember, do you remember what, what um, that negative did when you had something like this? Uh, f of x equal negative, um, negative x squared. So remember, this was a reflection about the x-axis. You remember that? So that was a reflection about the x-axis. When y'all talked about transformations, the same thing here. That's a reflection. So that's a reflection about the x-axis. So the way to do that is, is the way to think about this is this. So you, you know what 2 to the x looks like. This is 2 to the x right here. So a negative 2 to the x reflects this about the x-axis. So watch. So I'm going to draw it here. So, so this was uh, h of x equals negative 2 to the x. So this is 2 to the x. This is negative 2 to the x. So that negative right here is the reflection. Reflection about the x-axis. Okay? So meaning that, you see this point here? If I take that point, reflect it about the x-axis, so the point 2, 4 becomes the point 2, negative 4. So that distance, same as that distance. See this point right here, which was 1, 2? The point 1, 2 becomes a point 1, negative 2. 0, 1 becomes uh, 0, negative 1. And then it does this instead. So watch. This is what it looks like. And remember, this side gets closer and closer to the x-axis without touching it. And so that's the reflection. So this, so, so this right here is a reflection of this about the x-axis. All right. Now, what most students do, though, when given this, is they just use a t-table. But I, but I do need you to understand that this is a reflection of this. Okay. So let's use a t-table, see what we get. So again, use zero. Always use zero because remember, when you use zero, you're finding the y-intercept. You're finding the y-intercept. All right, now watch how simple this is. Just make sure you have about three or four points to guide you. 
So three points. So all you need is about three points. You need three to four points. Okay, and, and always use zero because you're finding the y-intercept. If x is zero, I get negative two to the zero. Well, remember, two to the zero is one, right? So this becomes negative one. So negative one. So then if you plot the point uh, zero, negative one, you get this. Now let's, let's uh, before we go any further, let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. You see there's no number right here, correct? So since there's no number, that means I can write this as plus zero. So z y equals zero, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, is the same thing as the x-axis. So, so here's, here's my horizontal asymptote right here, the x-axis. That's my horizontal, my horizontal asymptote. All right, so I found one point. Let's do about two or three more. If x is one, if x is one, I get negative two to the first power. X is one, negative two to the first. Well, two to the first is two. So this becomes negative two. Okay, so one negative two. So that's gonna be this, one negative two. If x is uh, two, if x is two, I get negative two to the second power. Well, two to the second power is four, so this becomes a negative four. So two negative four is right here. And so all you do is this, you just gotta remember this fact, that on this side, my graph is gonna get closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote, and on this side, it's gonna fall rapidly. And that's it. That's all you do. So this was h of x equal negative 2 to the x. Okay? All right, let's do a couple of more because we're already at 22 minutes on this. So let's do a couple more. So this will be number 4. So let's suppose in number 4 I have this problem in number 4. Uh, let's see. So let's suppose we had this one. All right, um, so this is number 4. So number 4, we have... Um, okay, so let's say we had g of x equals 3 to the x plus 1. 3 to the x plus 1. All right, so remember, that's an exponential function. So this is an exponential function because, because my exponent is a variable. And so this number right here is your y, I'm sorry, is, is your horizontal asymptote. And so my horizontal asymptote is y equal 1. Okay? That's your horizontal asymptote, y equal 1. And so, so now we, we can do this. We, we, can, we can go ahead and on the coordinate plane, y equal 1 is here. Okay, so y equal 1, that's your horizontal asymptote. We can go ahead and start plotting some points. So if, if, if x is 0, so remember that's your y-intercept, if x is 0, I get 3 to the 0 plus 1. Well, remember, 3 to the 0, that's 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 2. So 0, 2 is here. Okay? If x is 1, I get, I get 3 to the first plus 1. 3 to the first is 3. And 3 plus 1 is 4. So I get the point 1, 4. So 1, 4 is here. If x is uh, 2, if x is 2, I get 3 squared plus 1. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So I'm going to plot the point 2, 10. So 2, 10, though, is here. So I'm, gonna, I can't, I'm not going to do any more because it, it's going to get above here uh, quite rapidly, too. But I do know this. You see on this side, my graph rises rapidly. And what does it do on this side? Well, you need to know, remember on this side, it gets closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote without touching it. And so there's the graph. So there's your y inter, uh, your, your horizontal asymptote, and then there's, there's your graph. Now, so let's go ahead and, and, and talk about this, though. So we know that the horizontal asymptote here is y equal 1. Okay? We know the domain, and remember we talked about this, the domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers. So negative infinity infinity. Now let's talk about the range. So look at the range. So so remember when, when you found when you're talking about ranges, when you found ranges when the graphs were given what you did. So you went you went over um, you went along the y-axis. 
So you see how the graph starts around y equal 1 right here, and then it goes all the way to infinity? But remember, it doesn't, it doesn't touch y equal 1, right? So you use parentheses. So you can say parentheses 1, 2, infinity. So 1, 2, infinity. So when you talk about horizontal asymptote for, I'm sorry, when you talk about range for an exponential function, that number right here is always going to be your horizontal asymptote, y equal 1. So let's get the other one. So remember you did the other one. So what? In this case, right here, in this case, so let's talk about the range here. So the range here, see how the arrow is pointing down this time? So remember the range is this time is going to be from negative infinity to the horizontal asymptote. But remember the horizontal asymptote here is the x-axis, which is also y equal 0, right? So you're going to say negative infinity to 0 with parentheses. It's going to be parentheses because it never touches the horizontal asymptote. So if you look at the other one, so let's do the other one in terms of, of um, the range. So if you look at this one that we did earlier, so you see how the graph is above the horizontal asymptote in this case? So the range here will be from negative 3, negative 3, all the way to infinity. So the range is negative 3, comma, infinity. Parentheses for negative 3 because it, remember, it never touches, it never touches or crosses the horizontal asymptote. All right, so um, you're, you're going to be asked to, to talk about the range. So it's very easy to, to determine the range. You Just by looking at the graph, it's very easy to do. All right, so that one was, was number four that we just graphed. And let's do this one. So I want to show you this. So if h of x, let's say, is 1 half to the x minus 5, let's say, 1 half to the x minus 5. So don't let the fact that you have a fraction throw you off. All right. So, so um, notice, though, one thing you, you, you need to know right away is that this number right here is your horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is y equal negative 5. So I can go ahead and start um, drawing that horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equal negative 5. Okay, so there's my horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and plot some points, though, to help us. So remember, always use 0, because 0 is going to be your y-intercept. So if, if, if x is 0, if x is 0, I get 1 half to the 0 minus 5. And remember, 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 5, 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. So I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 4. Four. So 0, negative 4 is here. That's a y-intercept. If x is, let's say, 1, right, you would probably choose 1. If x is 1, you would have 1 half to the first minus 5. Well, 1 half to the first, if you, if you need to use your calculator, use your calculator. 1 half, 1 divided by 2 minus 5 would be a negative 4.5, right? So negative 4.5. So you get you're gonna plot the point one negative four point five. So negative uh, one negative four point five is right here though. Okay, right here. Let's go ahead and do negative one. So don't let the 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 fact that that the exponent is negative now throw you off. Remember we talked about. So remember if the exponent is negative, what do you do to the base? You take the reciprocal. To make this exponent positive, you take the reciprocal. That was in a previous course. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So I get 2 to the first minus 5, and 2 to the first is 2. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. So I get the point negative 1, negative 3. And check yourself. You have access to a calculator. So watch. Watch what I'm doing my calculator. So parentheses, 1 divided by 2. you got to put that in parentheses, though. You're going to raise it to the negative 1 power, okay? And then you're going to subtract 5. And watch. You get negative 3. Okay, so you get the point negative 1, negative 3. Let's plot that point. I want to show you something. When I plot that point, you get this. So you see how, how when you start kind of tracing those points, how it does this? All right, now let's do one more point. Let's let x be negative 2. If x is negative 2, I get um, uh, 1 half to the negative second minus 5. Remember, the exponent's negative. To get that exponent positive, I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. 
I get 2 squared minus 5. 2 squared is 4, so I get 4 minus 5, which is a negative 1. So I'm going to plot the point negative 2, negative 1. But before I do that, use your calculator to, go to check it. So I have parentheses 1 divided by 2, close the parentheses, raised to the negative second power, okay, and then subtract 5. And then so when I do that, I get negative 1, which is what I say we were going to get. I'm going to plot that point, negative 2, negative 1 is here. And just uh, connect those dots, connect those points. And so remember, it gets closer and closer to the x, uh, I'm sorry, to the horizontal asymptote without crossing it. And on this side, it does this. So just make it look like an exponential. Okay? All right, now let's talk about the uh, domain. So, so first of all, we know that the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 5. We know the domain, the domain of all exponentials, doesn't matter what it is, all exponentials are going to be from negative infinity all the way to infinity. It's all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. The range, that's easy. Okay, the range, remember, since, since it's above, you're going to start at, at that y value here. So negative 5 all the way to infinity. So the range is negative 5 to infinity. Okay? All right. Now, there's one thing that's that's important in in uh, in terms of exponentials, and that's this. And if you're going to take business calculus or uh, engineering calculus, you're going to see this notation. Okay, so let's talk about this for a moment. F of x equals e to the x. E to the x. You may say, well, what is e? E is actually a number. And if you look at your calculator. If you look at your calculator, uh, let's see, you'll see it right here. You can't see it on, on here, but it's right above that ln function, okay, that e. All right, and so so if if you, but, but it's an irrational number, just like pi. Remember pi in geometry was an irrational number? That's an irrational number. But we approximated it. We approximated to 3.14, but, but that's, that's an approximation. 3.14 is a rational number, but that's how we approximated the, the number pi. But, but um, it's actually an irrational number. The same thing for e. So if, you, if I look at the number e, so watch, the number e, so I'm going to press second, and so you see that number e, I'm going to raise it to the first power, and I get this number right here, but it keeps on going, okay? So, so this is an irrational number, but we approximate it. We approximate e to 2.718. That's how we approximate it. All right, so, but, um, but, but your calculator has the function e in it already. So, so don't even use this. Just use your calculator's e. All right, so let's talk about how to, to um, plot some points using your calculator. Now, you're going to need your calculator for this. It's not as easy. It's not as easy as as how we did these. See when the bases were were um, rational numbers, when the bases were rational, how we kind of figured it out without using a calculator. Here you you won't be able to do that because because e is an irrational number. So use your calculator. So if x is zero. Remember the y-intercept. Now that one's easy. You don't need your calculator for that because you know that any number raised to the zero power is one. So I'm going to put the point. I'm going to put the point um, uh, zero one. So zero one's here. Now before we go on, let's talk about the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote. Remember, there's no number here, right? So that's the same thing as saying e to the x plus zero. So your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, or the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and just start putting that dotted line here to represent the horizontal asymptote, which is y equal 0. Okay, so if x is 1, if x is 1, I get e to the first, which is going to be approximately equal to, so let's approximate this. So we're going to say, remember to get your, your now you need to use your calculator. So second e, second e, okay, to the first. Close the parentheses, press equal. So we're going to approximate to two uh, decimal places. So let's say, or let's just do one decimal place in this case, 2.7. So 2.7 about, okay? So 2.7. Now that's an approximation. So it's close to 3, but it's not 3. 
So here's the point 1, 2.7. So two point, So you see this is 3 right here. So 1, 2.7 would be about here, let's say. So that's approximation. We're approximating this. Now you see how my point's going up like this? So right away you know what's going to happen on this side, right? So take a guess what's going to happen on this side. Well, on this side, your, your, your graph's getting flatter. So it's getting closer and closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. And on this side, it's going to rise very rapidly. But let's do one more point. So if x is 2, if x is 2, watch what happens. I get e squared. So let's use a calculator for that. So e squared. So e raised to the second power. So you're going to say second e. Oops, sorry. Let me go ahead and redo it. So oops. So second e, right here, to the second power, close, and then press equal. So that's about what? 7.4? So it's approximately equal to 7.4. All right. So we're going to, we're going to plot that point. So 2, 7.4. 27.4 is about here, let's say. And there it is. There's your graph. Okay? Just make sure your graph looks like an exponential. So it's flat on one side. Well, not flat, but it gets closer and closer. It looks flat, but it's not because it's actually decreasing on this side and rising rapidly on this side. Okay? So this is what um, f of x equal e to the x looks like. But notice all I did... All I did to graph these was, was a t-table, and I used my calculator to help me. And we all know now that the horizontal asymptote, all exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote, and it's always this number, whatever that number may be. And the domain is all real numbers, so the domain of all exponential functions is all real numbers. Now let's talk about the range. So remember the range. See how the graph is above the horizontal asymptote? So the range is going to be from this y value, which is 0, all the way to infinity. So the range will be from 0 to infinity. Remember earlier we said that that number you put here better be that, that horizontal asymptote. Okay? All right. And I think that's all um, I wanted to talk about. And So it's about 37 minutes we spent on this. But you may, you really need to go back and look at those videos to, to help you understand this a little bit more. But that's basically what you're going to do. It's a very simple process. You have your calculator, and you now know that an exponential function um, is where your variable is located in the exponent. And use your calculator to help you to plus some points. And you all know how to find the horizontal asymptote now. Okay? So I'm going to end this part. And what I want to do now, I'm going to end it.